Hello again from the Space Weather Prediction Center. We are still monitoring the coronal mass ejection, those blasts of solar material in the form of charged particles and strong magnetic fields that were directed here towards Earth and what's transpiring from yesterday on into today. So yesterday we had two of three CMEs arrive here last night and they arrived here at Earth with a pretty darn good punch, enough to warrant the G4, the severe storm levels that we did in fact achieve last night. So a lot of the country got to see the aurora, those northern lights last night. Well, that CMEs have since passed mostly over Earth, perhaps even totally past Earth, but the third CME has arrived. It arrived a short bit ago. On some of the displays you see behind me, that's where we monitor the solar wind environment, where we can tell whether these CMEs arrive here at Earth or not, or are about to arrive here at Earth, they're a million miles away. And then we start to see geomagnetic responses here, like you see on some of these plots here behind me, that give us an idea of just how strong the magnetic disturbances is, so that we can send out the appropriate warnings and alerts here in response. Well, currently we still have G3 and less warning levels out there and they're continuing into the evening hours yet again tonight because of this third CME that has arrived. And we do have extended our G4, our severe storm watch, into the 13th of November, so into Thursday as a result of this new CME arrival. Now here's a key element. This latest CME arrived, it's faster than the previous CMEs and our wind speeds have shot up over 800 kilometers per second different kind of talk, just know that that's quite fast. Now that CME is passing over us as we speak, and now the magnetic field intensity, we're trying to get a feel of just how strong that is. We don't know if we're in the heart of the magnetic cloud itself yet, or if we're beginning to see the leading edges of that. Nevertheless, yesterday's activity was eight to 10 times stronger than normal background levels for a magnetic field. This one is about five times stronger. So not as intense, but we don't know where we're at in the stage of the CME evolution yet for this final CME. Also, the magnetic field that I talked about yesterday, it's currently pointed the same direction as Earth's. That's not favorable for escalated geomagnetic storm activity, but it can turn at any point in time. Perhaps it will turn again this evening. If it does, that potential that we have that watch out for, for a G4 could easily happen again. And that's why we've extended that watch into the 13th of November. So what we continue to do here at the Space Weather Prediction is monitor space weather from instruments that are out there in space and at and near around our planet here. And this is how we detect and monitor this type of activity. Now what we continue to focus on here at the Space Weather Prediction Center is the potential impacts and effect to our technologies and those that need to know what's happening out there in space. So we've been continuing throughout the day, all of last night, continuing to talk to those critical infrastructure operators from satellite controllers that are trying to maintain proper orbit levels for low Earth orbiting satellites. They've been dealing with this storm, perhaps burning fuel to make corrections to raise their altitude because these types of storms can make gravity win the war and the satellite will burn up in the atmosphere if they don't account for those needed corrections. None of that has happened because they're taking steps to manage the situation. We've been notifying and talking to the bulk electrical system operators in our country and in southern Canada to make sure that they're aware of the ongoing activity and that they can take steps to manage the situation. We're unaware of any impacts from this storm. That's probably due to the information that we provide as well as the fact that this never reached, you know, that G5, the top end of our scale, that really can induce those currents that cause problems and can overheat transformers and potentially lead to some collapses in the grid. Aviation has been diverting flights further equator where it is needed to maintain proper communications on certain channels and frequency bands that they need. GPS may be a little bit off, especially precision GPS. So if you need accuracy within a centimeter, that may not be so accurate when these types of storms happen. These are the types of things we communicate, even space launch. There was a launch scheduled for today. It got postponed because of space weather, this event that's unfolding. So now they're trying to figure out whether they can launch tomorrow. Things like that go on. That's what we do here at the Space Weather Prediction Center behind the scenes, because we want you to be able to go out and enjoy the beauty of the Northern Lights show that happened last night. Hopefully that happens for you again tonight. But at the same time, remember, that's causing impacts that we don't want to see happen. So know all that as you go and visit our webpage, our SWPSI webpage, spaceweather.gov. You can see for yourself what's actually happening out there in space. You can read the solar wind environment and see for yourself when things have turned favorable opposite Earth, and perhaps it's time to go out, take that drive to look for the aurora. 
Thanks a lot. We hope that these updates like this video is new for us. Hopefully that you've been enjoying these and these are quite helpful. If you, they are, please let us know and then we'll continue to do these for the next types of events. Thank you all and good luck Aurora chasing.